So in this lecture, we are going to discuss histoplasmosis. Histoplasmosis is basically a fungal infection that is actually caused by the most important fungus that is histoplasma capsulatum. In this lecture, we will cover the different aspects of the histoplasmosis like pathogenesis, clinical finding, lab diagnosis and the treatment. So let's start. So most important fungus is the histoplasma capsulatum. This fungus exists in two forms. So that's why we call it dimorphic fungus. It will exist in the mold form or you can say hyphae form. These are both the same thing. And they can also exist in the yeast. Here are basically the two forms of the histoplasma capsulatum. Okay. Important thing which you have to remember or how you will differentiate between the mold and the yeast. So, important thing, mold actually grow below the body temperature. If I say 25 degree, degree Celsius, that is the room temperature and yeast grow at the body temperature and that is the 37 degree. Okay, that is the one thing. And mold or you can say hyphae. So, you will see the two forms of the or two types of the conidia or you can say spores. So, in the hyphae, first you will see the tuberculate macroconidia. Here is basically the tuberculate macroconidia or you can say spore. Spores and conidia are basically same thing spore or you can say conidia. So, one important thing that is the tuberculate macroconidia, large size, thick wall and projection from the central part. Okay. Second, you will see other spores will be the micro, micro conidia or you can say micro spores. So, two types of spores formed by the, this fungus. One is the tuberculate macroconidia or you can say spore and second is the microconidia or you can say spores. Okay. And yeast exists in the unicellular form. If we discuss the epidemiology, so central and the eastern states of the US, Mississippi River Valley specifically exist this fungus there. And you will see this histoplasma capsulatum easily grow in the soil which is contaminated with the birds drooping. Okay, that's the most important thing. Birds drooping. That is the favorable conditions for the growth of the histoplasma capsulatum. Okay, next is the pathogenesis. So, when someone inhale the spores of the histoplasma, as we have discussed two types of spore, macroconidia and the microconidia. So, if someone inhale the spores of the histoplasma capsulatum, okay, then they will go inside the lungs and in the lungs, you will see the presence of the macrophages, alveolar macrophages. Alveolar macrophages engulf these spores. And ultimately, inside the macrophages, these spores will convert into the yeast. Okay, if you see here, this is the structures of the macrophage. And macrophage engulf the spores and inside the macrophages you will see the presence of yeast here is the yeast of form of the fungus lot of yeast will be present inside the fungus but the question is why these macrophages don't eat their spores that is the most important question because when if i say here is the macrophage Okay, now you see engulfment of the fungus. But important thing, you will see here is the fungus that is actually surrounded by the membrane. That is actually the 
phagosome okay and inside the macrophages you will see the lysosome okay here is the lysosome and here is the phagosome both combine okay you will see the combination of the phagosome and the lysosome okay and ultimately the enzymes that are actually present in the lysosome destroy the fungus okay that is the thing but fungus before the action of the different enzymes of the lysosome fungus secrete the substances that actually increase pH. pH of the phagolysosome and ultimately the fungus can survive in such a condition okay that's the most important thing so phagolysosome and lysosome both combine to form the phagolysosome but fungus secrete the substances that increase pH and that inactivate the lysosomal enzyme and that is the favorable conditions for the fungus and in that condition uh, you will see the growth of the different uh, yeast form of the fungus inside the macrophages that is the important diagnostic criteria of the histoplasmosis okay next you will see the clinical finding you will see the three most important forms acute forms chronic form and the disseminated form so what will be the symptoms of the acute forms so in the acute forms as we have discussed the most important organ that is affected by the histoplasma is the lungs so clinical findings will be related to that so most important will be the fever in acute phase sudden onset of the histoplasmosis fever headache chills cough and the chest pain these are basically the acute symptoms of the histoplasmosis and in severe form of the histoplasmosis you can also see the pneumonia and the lungs lesions cavitary lungs lesions in the apical part of the lungs you will see the cavity formation and you can easily see on the chest x-ray okay in the chronic situation you will see the fever dyspnea means difficulty in breathing productive cough in which you will see the mucus okay and apical infiltrate and the cavity so apical side of the lungs you will see the infiltrate infiltrate that is a substance higher or denser than the air that can be blurred and pus something like this so that can be easily detect on the chest as x-ray so at the apical side you can see the infiltrate and you can also see the uh, cavity okay but important thing that can be quite confusing with the tb so you just have to differentiate uh, between the histoplasmosis and the tb okay next is the disseminated histoplasmosis you will see the infection has been spread to the whole body and the histo uh, disseminated histoplasmosis is mostly seen in immunocompromised patients okay in which you will see the infants can be infected by the hi disseminated histoplasmosis and the immunocompromised if i say aids patient so in the aids patient most important clinical finding in the aids patient is the pain cytopenia okay if you go towards the cbc pain cytopenia you will see the reduced blood count white blood cell red blood cell and the platelets okay and you can also see the ulcerated lien ulcerated lesions on the tongues lesions on tongues that is the important clinical finding but what about the immunocompetent patients so in the immunocompetent patient you will see the erythema nodosum okay you will see the erythema nodosum in which you will see the red tenderness uh, specifically on the skin of the tibia and the ulna that will be seen in the immunocompetent patient okay in the lab diagnosis if you take the tissue specimen and the bone marrow aspirate so in this both situation if you uh, go towards the microscopy you will see the macrophages and inside the macrophages you will see the presence of lot of yeast form of the histoplasma capsulatum okay next you can go towards the culture of the fungus so in the culture most important media 
will be the seboroid agar okay that is the culture media of the fungus okay if you grow the fungus at 37 at 37 degrees celsius then the form will be yeast but if you grow at 25 degrees celsius then the uh, important forms of the fungus is the hyphae okay so here are basically the two forms yeast and the uh, mold form next you can go towards the elisa in which you will detect the polysaccharide antigens of the fungus okay that is actually done mostly in case of the immunocompromised patients because you can't detect the antibodies in the immunocompromised patient so that's why you go towards the antigen detection instead of the antibody detection next you will see you will go towards the serology antibody detection okay in that case you can go towards the complement uh, fixation test or you can go towards the immunodiffusion test cf and the id so these are basically the two serological tests in which you will detect the antibody against the histoplasma capsulatum and last most important you will see the treatment so treatment drug of choice will be the itra itraconazole you can also go towards the amphotericin b an important thing if the patient uh, is facing kidney damage then you will uh, prescribe the liposomal amphotericin b instead of the amphotericin b and you can also uh, go towards the fluconazole in case of meningitis so these drugs can be vary from patient to patient and can be vary according to the locations of the world so this is all about the histoplasmosis if you still have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much